Center of Life Church, making life worth living. I said, God, what are we going to minister to your people? And God said, the Holy Spirit, the catalyst for change in the new beginning. The Holy Spirit, the catalyst for change in the new beginning. And I was saying, God, hey, how would I use the Holy Spirit as a catalyst? Who am I? God is good to listen to the Spirit of God. He can never be wrong. And there are two definitions. I saw one. He says it's a substance that increases the rate of a chemical reaction without itself undergoing any permanent chemical change. There's another one. He says a person that precipitates an event. A person or thing that precipitates an event. What does it mean to precipitate? So when you precipitate, cause to happen, lead to, give rise to, instigate, trigger, spark. You need that spark in your life. You need that fire. You need it. You need that fire in your life. Some of us, we have been too dormant. We have been, we are sleeping. Oh, wake you that sleepers. Wake up. There is more to this. And believe me, you will be thinking, oh, this is about financial prosperity, blah, blah, blah. Okay, when you go out and you want to go to downtown and you want to take, let's say you don't even have a car and you want to take the subway, you, want, you know they have a pass. If you go there and just say, Jesus is Lord, they will open for you and you will go inside. You know, since it's not about financial prosperity, right? You know, let me tell you, salvation means nothing missing, nothing broken. Everything is a complete package. You think Jesus wants to see you just like that, not having things? No, a complete package in your healing, in your health, in everything that concerns you. He wants to precipitate that change in the name of Jesus. And that is what God is going to do in this season in Jesus' name. I'm not here to say no. Don't, uh, you know, don't use your money for this, Lord, that. No, 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 no. God has said, everything that I have is yours. For he has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. So which means you are not missing out of anything. Anything, anything that you need to make yourself, you can't make yourself, for, for you to move on. It's all inside of you. You just need to discover it. It is all, you are a complete package of the master. You are a masterpiece. You need to look at yourself again. I say, my goodness, look at this amazing work of glory because you are the glory of the almighty God. You look at yourself again. Look at what God has done in my life. Today, if you don't know God, you are going to run. You don't even wait for altar call. Ah, I want to taste this. The psalmist said, taste and see that the Lord is good. He has never, ever, ever disappointed. If there is anything in your life that has happened, and you believe, my God, why did this happen? Was it not? No, God is not asleep. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. I want us to go to John 14. You know, when I'm preaching, I don't look at the time. And I hope we're, we are not in a hurry. <laughs> Amen. I want to be like Pastor Bayo today. <laughs> who has not even started with the introduction. Amen. John 14, 16 to 17. Because people will be wondering, Holy Spirit, how, you know, uh, that is uh, too high, you know. There are some people that just, I say this change is for every single individual in this church. In the name of Jesus. John 14, verse 16 to 17. That's Amplified Classic. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter, counselor, helper, intercessor, advocate, strengthener, and standby that he may remain with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, welcome, take to its heart, because it does not see him or know and recognize him. But you know and recognize him, for he lives with you constantly and will be in you. So don't think, ah, this is for the pastors. This is just for the leaders. Ah, this is for the intercessors. This is for people that, oh, they are so close to him. 
Have you not read? Have you not known? Look at all the people God has used in the Bible. Look at them. We, did they qualify for Did they merit it? No. When you gave your life to Christ, the spirit of the Lord came inside of you. You might not have the opportunity to have made use or to rely on the Holy Spirit, but it is living inside of you. It is residing on your inside. So you are going to make use of it because the spirit of God is dwelling on your inside and he's going to be your standby, your advocate, your counselor. The one that you relate to is not going to be, you know, when you make use of the Holy Spirit's presence every day. You know, you are just communing. You are fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. He will tell you, do this, do that. Go here, don't go there. People's lives have been changed, have been saved, have been delivered through dependence and reliance. Constantly, continuously on the Holy Spirit. This is the year of the supernatural. When we're talking about the supernatural, of course, we, are not made, we don't mean the natural. It's something that precedes natural realm. It is supernatural. Something that you yourself cannot comprehend. How things can work into this way, it is only through the Holy Spirit. We cannot do it by ourselves. Even when you're praying, your human mind will begin to pray for the things that you think should be. You will be praying, but look, God is directing you towards something else. That is why we need to know more about the Holy Spirit. Spirit and God, Holy Spirit's ministry. So what I'm telling you is that look, what the Holy Spirit is saying, I am in you and I will constantly abide with you. Are there instances that we grieve the Spirit? Oh, yes. But he has never left you. No matter what. That's why most of the time you find out that people that, you know, people that stray, they come back. Why? The sense of the Holy Spirit inside of them is reminding them. Praise the Lord. Romans 8 verse 9. He says, but you are not living the life of the flesh. You are living the life of the spirit. If the Holy Spirit of God really dwells within you, directs and controls you. This is not my word. This is the word of God. But if anyone does not possess the Holy Spirit of Christ... He is none of his. He does not belong to Christ. He's not truly a child of God. So if you say, oh, the Holy Spirit, the Holy, once you gave your life, the Holy Spirit is in you. So this free gift resides in you. You can totally depend on him to do everything that you need. And he will direct you in Jesus' name. Let's go to verse 14. And when you're totally relying on the Holy Spirit, he says, for all who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. Allow yourself to be led. Be led by the Spirit of God. I want to talk about uh, King Saul. 1 Samuel 10, verse 6. You know, when Israel, was, uh, when Israel wanted a king, and they said, oh, God, we need, because other nations have kings, we also need a king. They, they were uh, pestering and saying, yes. God said, okay, no problem. We will give you a king if that's what you want. And God chose one from the tribe of Benjamin, the tribe that Israel did not even have any recognition for. He chose Saul. And despite all the inadequacies of Saul, God still chose him. Even though they said, oh, he was handsome, the most beautiful, tall, elegant, everything. But he still had some issues. But immediately, God called him. The spirit of the Lord. That was what Samuel said. He said, the spirit of the Lord will come upon you. The spirit of the Lord will come upon you. You will prophesy and you will be turned into a new man. When the spirit of the Lord, you know, there was a time I was praying after pastor led us, uh, he gave, uh, he preached about, a, I believe it was Ezekiel. I said this yesterday, just came to my spirit. And how Ezekiel, you know, when he had, I think it was a revelation, and the water came to his ankle, and then to his knee, then to the waist, and then overflowing. I said, oh my goodness, I also want to overflow in this. I want the spirit of God. I want so much of it. And then I started praying. I had that desire. I prayed, and I prayed, and I prayed. I said, God, I don't want the old tongues. I want new. I want new. I want change. All of a sudden, after so much of prayer, I was in my room one day, and I was praying, and the Holy Spirit came, and this is real. My 
you know, my throat, everything changed. And there was a new, it was so refreshing. I didn't even want to stop. The glory of God just filled the room. So what I'm trying to say is that, yeah, see, desire it. I want more. The Holy Spirit will lead you to things that you yourself cannot even discover. He will lead you to the right place, the right application, the right husband, the right wife, everything. Why? He's the spirit of truth. There is no error in the Holy Spirit. He reveals truth. He says, whatsoever I have heard from my father, I will speak unto you. I will not leave you alone. I will give you a standby, an advocate, a counselor, a teacher, and he will lead you into all truth. Praise the Lord. Acts 10 verse 38. It says, how God anointed and consecrated Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with strength and ability and power. How he went about doing good and in particular, curing all who were harassed and oppressed by the power of the devil, for God was with him. There is no way you can do all these things without the Holy Spirit. If you have the call of God upon your life, if you know that God has called, and look, it's not everybody that will stand here and be preaching. No. You have different calls, all of us. The, the, uh, the household of faith, there are so many things God has placed for us to do. You can be relevant in different areas. You see a need. You would ask God, what is it that you want me to do? I am available. There is always a place for you to fill in the kingdom. And the Holy Spirit will empower you. He gives you the power to do it in the name of Jesus. Because Acts 1 verse 8 says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be with, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you are a new person. You have changed. You become brand new. When that power comes upon you, it induces you. You can do all that which you cannot do in the ordinary. Praise the Lord. There's a divine enablement. There's a divine enablement. Things that you yourself cannot do ordinarily, you will be able to do it. 1 Corinthians 2, 7. That I believe if any man is, be it, uh, is in Christ, is a new creature, all things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. There's a newness this morning. There's a newness for us. As a believer, you cannot do without the help of the Holy Spirit. You cannot do without the help of the Holy Spirit. Anything that you are doing, and you are doing it on your own, then you have to help yourself to maintain it. If you are doing anything in your power, and you know that, yes, you will wear yourself out. Why? Because you can't do it on your own. Psalm 127 verse 1. I'm using my own version because I have the Amplified Classic. It says, except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Except the Lord keeps the city, the watchman works in vain. If you notice they've built the house, what are you building? Are you building your life based on what other people want of you? Or are you measuring your life based on what another person has done? It is not what God has called you to do. Are you doing things because it's an expectation? Or you are doing things because God has called you to do it? We need to measure and think. Because after having done everything, you would have built the house. Not just the physical house. Think of any endeavor. You would have gone to the school for four years. You have done everything. And there's no fulfillment. That's why Solomon said, vanity upon vanity, all is just vanity. Why? Because the glory of God was not upon it. He never asked you to do it. Because people are doing this profession, you run. Ah, people are saying this, you run. People are saying, come and invest, you run. People are saying, you're going out scatter. Can you chill? Can you calm down? God is in control. Be still and know that I am God. You don't need to run everywhere. Just sit down and download the secret from heaven. 
Sit down and download it. Download what God has given you. If not, God forbid that we all be in vain. He says, it is vain for you to rise up early, to take rest late, to eat the bread of anxious, listen to this, to eat the bread of anxious toil, for he gives blessings to his beloved in sleep. You know what this means? People are toiling. Morning, day, and night. It's good to, I, I work hard. At times I work at night and because I have to keep up and all that. And I rely totally on the Holy Spirit. But there are times you are not where you are supposed to be. So remember, as I said, you are struggling to keep yourself. So anything that you are doing, I, I must do it. I must keep up. What, you are relying on your own strength. <laughs> God forbid that you wear yourself out. Why? Because the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich and it added no sorrow to it. Toiling does not increase it. So if you're saying, ah, I must make X amount of money, I will do this, uh, I will do that. It's, look, this is, I must be very cautious. I'm not saying that we should not work hard. Hard work is good. You have to provide. But let it be that you are in his will. When you are in his will, things will just go easily. Smooth. It doesn't mean you will not have challenges. You would have. Oh, because God wants you to use faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. He who comes to him must believe that he is the rewarder of those who didn't let him seek him. You must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those who didn't let him seek him. So no matter what, toiling does not increase it. It is good to know the Lord. It is good for you to sit and study the word of God. Let it enter inside of you. Let him Speak to your spirit. Let him tell you which way to go. He says, I will lead and direct you in the way in which you should go. He did not say, I would, I will go, I will, you will do it yourself. He said, I will lead you. Don't do what people are expecting. I don't know why I'm, the Holy Spirit is just hammering on this. Don't do what people expect you to do. Because at the end of the day, if you fall, some people will help you. And at the end of the day, they can't help you forever. But God will keep you because he's the one. When he sends you on an assignment, he has already made provision available. When he says something, he has already put people in place. But work in your own assignments. Don't work in Pastor Onyi's assignment. Don't work in Brother Sylvia's assignment. Don't work in Pastor Bio's assignment. Work in your own assignments. Many of us have been called to even to the marketplace. Because I believe that is what God has called me to do. To empower people to fulfill their call in the body of Christ. Especially women. And also in the marketplace. You can be who you want to be. There is no way if God has called you, then be the best. Strive to be the best. Hallelujah. And as Solomon said, as I was reading Psalm 1-7, to it shows the vanity of an endeavor which the Lord is not active in. A celebration of value, an endeavor in which God himself is not glorified. There are many people that build houses that they cannot even sleep inside of it. God forbid. That is not our portion in Jesus' name. So this morning, I want to ask you, what do you see? What do you see? When I came into this country, to the glory of God, 2001, only me, Flying in KLM, or oh, no, Lufthansa. I still have my ticket today. It's still with me. Why? I always use it and say, ah, it was just a one-way ticket too, because I knew I wasn't going back. And I looked at it. My goodness. It was when I landed in Alberta, I said, what am I doing here? You know, you are so excited and all that, and then when you come into the land, you realize you are alone. There's no family. Nobody knows you here. <laughs> It's good to know the, the God that you serve. When I was cleaning tables as a master student, <laughs> I was cleaning the table. Uh, some of the Nigerian students will be wondering, ah, my goodness, see this lady. Uh, what's, uh, they, will, they will even ask me, ah, why are you even doing this? <laughs> hey, as I'm cleaning the tables, I'm seeing parliament. Hey, as I'm cleaning the tables, I can see glory and honor. I say, the people, they don't know where I'm coming from. If they know where I'm coming from, if my father sees me cleaning this table, where he is in his grave, he will turn upside down and run and say, Kai! 
It's not possible. Well, when the father is not there, nobody is holding you. What are you going to do? <laughs> and nobody knew anything at home. I will clean the table so I will wash the washroom. I had about three or four jobs. And they'll be wondering, ah, what's this girl doing? What is hell? When God began with me, oh my goodness, he started with a free grant from my faculty. I said, my goodness, this is real money. I haven't seen this money before. And there was a time God reminded me. I don't know why. This is for somebody. As I was praying, God said, hey, have you paid your tithes? I said, yeah. Somebody, a sister came to my room. And she was talking to me about tithing. I knew about tithing. But you know, it becomes really, really a struggle, strength, when you just have $100 all to your name, just $100, and you say, ah, you need to tithe. Hey, that was when I realized, Jesus is Lord. I need to tithe. Hmm. That night, you would think they told me to give $1 million. I started with night vigil. Oh, Lord, my God, you know where I'm coming from. When I give this amount of money, I know what you can do. I know what you, it was a serious night vigil. Ah, the students that are here, they are blessed and highly favored. And I pray you, be, you will always be praying for your parents. You will always be praying for your wonderful parents that have given you everything. They gave you, they even give you ticket, everything. Ah, some of us, ah, thank God. God is good. God is faithful. And thank God for my parents. I thank God for my mom. I thank God. My dad is late. But oh my goodness. I know my sister will be emotional if I say this. But I give God the glory. When I gave the tithes, before in church, I will give 25 cents. This is a real life story. And when I'm giving that 25 cents, I'm sure I've said it before. It will be as if this hand is so heavy. Ah, 25 cents. God. But you know, God knows. The little that I have. It meant a lot to me, but I will be giving it just 25 cents, 25 cents. And if you give people that are begging on the street, they'll look at you and be wondering. And it was shaking. I'll be giving it like this. So talk less of the tithes. Hey, it was heavy. But I said, and God is so good. As I opened the scripture, the first thing that I saw, those that sow in tears shall reap in joy. And that was it. I started praising God. I said, God, I thank you. I didn't know I was sowing into my future. I didn't know I was sowing into my destiny. And God has been so faithful. Today, who is talking about 25 cents? Who is talking about, just to draw attention on me, God has taken us beyond, above, and when people say it's time to sow, oh, it takes revelation. I always talk about it. I don't like talking about money because they say, you know, preachers, they do this, they do that. You know what? Don't speak about anointed men of God. Anointed men and women of God. You are not the judge. And I'm saying it. You are not the judge. They are not perfect. But don't speak. Nobody can touch the Lord's anointed and go guiltless. Remember David. God gave Saul into David's hand. He could have sniped the head once. Just once. I think one of his servants was saying, God has given your enemy into your hands. This is the opportune time. You will not even take twice that I will strike. Just once, firm, and his head. He said, no, not me. I will not touch the Lord's anointed and go guiltless. So when they are talking, me, I, there's not, you cannot say, uh, Pastor Shubola said this. Never. I've learned. No, it's not me. Anything I can say in front of you, I can say I, at your back, I will say it in front of you. Why? Because there's an alarm bell inside of me, and that's the Holy Spirit. When I begin to say, you know, at times, you, well, yeah, you, are, you are talking with your friend or whatever, and that thing, it wants to be sweet. Ah, you know, you come and the, the enemy will not give you one story. Then one story to the other. It is so sweet. What have you achieved? What have you achieved? Absolutely nothing. But that alarm bell that you ignore, you always ignore it because the Holy Spirit is inside of you. And you always know. When you're doing wrong, you will know. When you're not doing what is right, you will know. As most of us, we just ignore it. And you grieve the Holy Spirit. That word is for somebody. So what have you seen? In this 2018, have you taken a tally? God, anytime we're approaching a new year or anything, I have a book I bought since 2001. I always write my expectations for each year. And then I go back and I say, my goodness, God, you have been so good. There are some that was fulfilled. There are some. Something just came to my spirit. You know, when God 
When you have been praying, ah, God, this is what I want. You have been praying. You know, ah, I know this is what God, this is a job God wants me to do. I know, I know, and I know it. And then, this is just to inform you that we found another suitable candidate. And we will put your application in the pool or in our file. And you say, ah, God, you hate me. Oh, my goodness. Why is this happening to me? <laughs> Be careful. Be careful. There are some things God will save you from. Because he's the one that knows the end from the beginning. He knows that, ah, if you get this job, hey, that will be the end. It will take your whole life. Everything. Do what? There's some places I thank God God did not take me to. Because then, I will pray, God, this is it. In the name of Jesus. When, in fact, when you talk about, conf I even started to say, you know, oh, yes, this is a place that I'm walking in. It's just about to come into, because, you know, you've used your faith. And that faith, you've already started to speak it already. Oh, no, it's going to come very soon. At the end of the day, ah, God, what happened? Ah, God. But it's a sign of redirection. God wants you to be in his perfect will. That word is for someone. But what have you imagined this 2018? What has God spoken to you? When I was thinking about this, God took me to Genesis verse 11. Genesis chapter 11. And he was talking about the Tower of Babel. When, the, when men came and they said, oh, let us build for us uh, a tower that will reach high up to the heavens, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> God came down. I said, my goodness. See what men can do. Have you ever thought of it? The imagination of men. What? You just think of certain things. There was a day. Oh, my goodness. The Holy Spirit wants me to say this before I finish the Tower of Babel. Anytime I have my children and I'm at home doing their maternity leave, there's something on my inside. There's always a change. I want something new. And you just see ideas just come into my head. Things like that. And there was a day I was just sitting down and I just thought of something. I said, oh, this should be it. It was about an invention for crib. You'll be thinking, ah, Pastor Miss, do you know anything about all these uh, scientific things? Ah, it's the Holy Spirit. Oh. Hmm. So I thought of it, the crib, how you can design it and all that. Even to the extent, when I was even discussing it, my son, oh, he borrowed that idea. And he used it for his project in school. And the, uh, and the teacher was like, oh, my goodness, this is good. So I said, mm, let me even take it further. You never know. The great inventor in Center of Life Church. Ah, maybe this is what God wants. So I went to a website, and I said, um, this is my new invention. Of course, they want to know everything. And then they came, uh, they called me, they sent me an email. They followed up with a call, and they said, okay, it's new. Uh, I said, no, this is new. Nobody has ever done it before. Ah, I know. I said, okay, go to this Google. I don't know if anybody knows about it. Go to Google, check it, blah, 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 blah. My goodness. Eh? I am behind time. <laughs> I am behind. People have even. Hey, Jesus. I thank you. People have already gone ahead of me to even make it better. Ah, I said, what? And then I went to that website and I looked at it. God, see what people are in. God is a good God. That's why he told us that we are to have dominion. We have dominion. That means it is inside of you. For me to have even thought of that, I even gave myself credit that I used this brain to think of something apart from law. I said, God, I thank you. So which means I can even go further. There was another... <laughs> be careful, though, or get rich quickly. <laughs> Let it be the Holy Spirit that is directing you. And I'm not against invention because even me, myself, I want to invent too. I want to be... I want new things. I, I, I'm not the person that can sit down and just be content with just mediocrity. No! There is more for you. So when I was reading this scripture, I was going to Genesis 11, and it was saying, look at what man has done. Wow. So which means nothing that they imagine can ever be taken away from them. There is nothing that you, you can just imagine things. Now, there's some people that imagine us out of God. And then they create all things that perverse the, the, uh, the scripture. And they create all things. that Those are not the things I'm talking about. When you are in line with the Spirit and you are communing with the Spirit, there is nothing that you imagine that will be taken away from you. That scripture alone, I looked at it. You know, God says all things are possible to those who believe. I don't want you to dream small. We want to come and celebrate you when they call you to parliament. 
We want to come and celebrate you. When God has given you all that you desire, we want to come and rejoice with you. Because mayors are coming from Center of Life Church. We know people that own investments, billionaires, they are coming from this church. Believe it and receive it. It is what do you see? What do you see yourself doing? What has God called you to do? What is your own vision for your life? And I'm not talking of what you think. It is what God has given you. What is your purpose? Are you just existing as a human being and you're not living? There was one advertisement I was watching on the TV. And they said, it was about an insurance company. And they said, why are you existing? Something like that, believing. And I was I, I just sat down because, you know, there are times you just take things and you just think about it. I said, well, do you know this is true? So people are just existing. Monday, wake up, 9 a.m. I go to work, go to school. It's good to go to school though, because I went to school, please. 9 a.m., wake up, <laughs> go to work, come back, eat. Children, you're okay. God bless you. Come back. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday. Some people even cross over to Sunday. Why? So that they can get the complete package that God is not in. Please, I'm not saying there are some uh, uh, occupations that you need to work on Sunday. Please, I'm not saying that you should pass on and say, ah, we should not work on Sunday. Bye-bye. No. Even though we don't encourage it. But what is your life about? Is it just that? Is that what you want? I don't think so. Why? Because God has more. There is more. There is more. There is more. And the way you can only get it is through the Holy Spirit. He can download it for you. Why? Because we're mortal. We're humans. I just want, I want to do this. Yes, your talent can give you that strength. I'm not just saying that you should come and be a preacher, do that. Yes, that's, if that is part of your calling, God bless you. God will enable you. Like I said, God has called some people into the marketplace as well. Discover it. Be the best in it. So that when they are counting people, Ah, they said, no, we can rely on this person. It's not when you are at work. Ah, even your character. Oh, my goodness. They will say, ah, we didn't know. Some of them, they don't even know if you're a Christian. Because when you get there, mm, mm, don't touch me. Don't do this. Don't hear. They're just. What is your life about? What are you striving for? Are you going off on your own, chasing all the things that you should not be chasing? <laughs> Look, when there's a call of God upon your life, you can't escape. Oh. You cannot. You will just be deceiving yourself. You cannot escape it. You cannot. I was listening to Kenneth Copeland. He said, ah, he ran. But didn't he come back? He had a praying mother. You have to come back because that is where your destiny lies. That is where fulfillment lies. And remember, the call is not just to stand like pastor. There are different calls, different callings. Discover it. Please, discover what your calling is because that is where you would excel. That is where your strength would be. And when you are doing it, do it like no man's business. Remember when Jesus said, I am going about doing my father's business. Do it like your father's business. That means your father, the way you would operate your own father's business. Even do it more. Do it more. And then you will see. God says, he is not a debtor to any man. Those of us, or many people that have been doing his work. Ah, God, you remember me. Ah, your time is coming. Remember, there is, to everything, there is a season. Don't be weary in doing good. Don't be weary at all. Trust in him that your own Kairos moment has come. The Lord is good. The Bible says in Psalm 2 verse 30, those who honor me, I will honor. Those who honor me in everything, I will honor. In Ecclesiastes, they said there's an evil we have seen under the sun. When slaves are riding on horses, and then princes, they are walking on the earth. Not literally meaning slaves. When you are not in the position you are supposed to be, then you as a king, as a prince, because he has called us to reign in life as kings, you are now working, doing the things they are not supposed to be doing. It is an error. It is an error. 
Now I want to go to the real business. The Holy Spirit told me to say this. It's not in my own making. I want us to go to Haggai chapter 1. Or they call it Haggai. Amen. I'm going to start from verse 3. Then came the word of the Lord to Haggai, the prophet, saying, Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses? This was when uh, the people were saying, It's not yet time to build, to have the Lord's house to be rebuilt. So the prophet said, Is it time for you yourself to dwell in your paneled houses while this house of the Lord lies in ruins? Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways and set your mind on what has come to you. You have sown much, but you have reaped little. You eat, but you do not have enough. You drink, but you do not have, but you do not have your fill. You clothe yourself, but no one is, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages has earned them to put them in a bag with holes in it. God forbid. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways, your previous and present conduct and how you have fared. Go up to the hillside and, you know, and so on and so forth. I want to read verse 9. He says, you looked for much harvest and behold, it came to little. And even when you brought that home, I blew it away. Why, says the Lord of hosts, because my house, which lies waste, while you yourself run each man to his own house, the house of God. What does it mean to you? Remember, you go about doing your father's business. This is not meaning a literal house. Yes, the Lord was talking about the temple. The interpretation that I got is not literal house. Whatsoever God has called you to do, you better do it with your whole might, with everything that lies on your inside, so that the blessing of the Almighty God will be upon it. Do it well. Do it like no other person has ever done it. Do it that the house of the Lord will not lie in ruins. Do it with all your strength. Do it with all your might. You know, when we were growing up, and uh, my sister, she used to do this to me all the time. They'll say, oh, go and sweep there. And I'll just be doing it. They say, "Ah, hey, (laughs) you better do it well, oh. (laughs) You better do it well. She always says something that uh, uh, um, there's no blessing in just half. You have to finish it. Ah, I I'll be thinking, yes, 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 it's true. She used to use a word, I've forgotten that, and I'll just do it. You know, because I, wa- I want the blessing as well. You know, so God is saying, whatsoever he has placed in your hand, do it with all your might. Do it with all your strength. And if God is talking to you right now, that you are supposed to be doing something in the house of the Lord, ah, run, run. His house cannot lie in ruins. And you go and seek your own business 24-7. Well, his, his house. Believe me, there will be other people that will do it. It's not. <laughs> there are other people available. But God forbid that another person will take your place. In the name of Jesus. Rely on the spirit of God. Walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. Galatians 5 verse 25. Walk in the spirit Walk in the Holy Spirit. Constant walk in the Holy Spirit. We need to come back to our first love. There's nothing we can do without the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of the living God. The one who reigns in the affairs of men. The I am that I am. The almighty God. He's saying, come back home. Come back to me. You did not end this love. This love is a free gift. Have you imagined the blood of Jesus that is still flowing? It is still flowing. That means there's still time. That blood is still flowing for you today. That blood is still flowing. God loved you and he still loves you. He loved you so much that he sent his only begotten son to die just for you. And he loves you so much. He wants you to be in his perfect will. He wants to lead and direct you in the way in which you should go. He wants you to have a change. 
And he's saying that you can only do it with me. Don't use your head. Come to me and I will give you secrets. Hidden secrets of the kingdom. Come, let us reason together. Draw closer to me. Whatsoever that I have placed my hand on, it will definitely prosper. Why? The blessing of the Lord is the only. He says the blessing of the Lord is what make it rich. There's no sorrow attached to it. When you are in his blessing, you thrive. You soar. You are enjoying it. Even if you have just one dollar, you are working like a millionaire. And you know that definitely your end is that which God has proposed for you. 